Good morning, friends, wherever you are. And uh, welcome to today's Cichlids and Coffee. I'm Ben Ochart, and I will be your host. <laughs> so, welcome, folks. Good to see you. AV is great. Thank you, my friend. You know, that saves me a lot of anxiety when you tell me right away. And so, thank you for that, Denny. And let's see here. One quick adjustment to make here. So I hope you folks are doing well wherever you are in the uh, in the world. I noticed we had some folks on from India, and I welcome them. Sundar, Sundar's here, and let's see here. Let's see who else we have in house. And more folks are jumping on, I'm sure. Cat Sailor's in the house. Hello, Cat. Angelo is here. Some of the best people, Finn Golan, Finn Golfin, Finn Golfin. <laughs> well, I'm glad you're back, Finn Golfin. As I like to say, the, uh, the stream is better with you, with you here. And let's see here. Salient in the house, one of my wonderful moderators, along with Denny, who I've already said hi to, and Cichlid Kings in the house. Ray Barksdale is here. Good morning to you, as is Jeff Hester. Hey, Jeff. And uh, are you rounding them all up, Jeff? I know you were concerned about if everybody was here. Uh, you got to share that link, my friend. I get out there and, you know, ring the bell. Hey, Melissa. Melissa in the house. Z-Zip. Hello, Z-Zip. Peas and Haps. How are you doing, my friend? Hope you're doing great. Nathan's here. Warren Venter is here. Hope you're having a good weekend, too. Uh, Paul Newman is here, who sent me some some pictures of his aquarium. And, Paul, I, I apologize. I did not uh, have the time to compile that, but I will share them in next week's live stream. So uh, thank you for sending me those. Loved them. And let's see here. Nathan in the house. Manuel is here. Hello, Manuel, from Stockton, California. Cruise Aquatics. Cruise Aquatics. What a great name. It looks like the name of a shop, if you have a shop, and um, it would be a great name. Michael Welsh in the house. Uh, M Michael, I'll talk about that hole in the head today. I will talk about hole in the head and uh, what I've observed. Ray Barksdale shared a link to the Facebook group. Thank you, Ray. I appreciate that. That, that group, you know, just kind of chugs along. And uh, in all honesty, Denny, uh, you know, Dennis Rudell does, does probably more there than I do. But uh, when, I, when I go check in, I like what I'm seeing. It's uh, respectful. It's, it's uh, a helpful group. And uh, we have a new wave of folks that have joined in that have been sharing their aquariums and, and uh, fish lately. And, it, you know, it's been O'Cyclid, but it, it's open to all, all fish keepers. So um, don't let the name fool you, Ben. It, I think it's been changed to Ben O'Cyclid and a lot more. So uh, check it out. We've got, as a matter of fact, this this month's banner is uh, an electric blue Acara. So that's a cichlid, but it's not an African cichlid, which is what people might expect when they go there. Good morning, Tracy. Glad you're here. And let's see here. The, fa the fish fam link is here hey fish fam link good to see you and what is this n a w m nam san nam sani nam <laughs> i thank you for for saying you love me that's very sweet of you very very sweet of you all right i don't know vibes what is kraken you tell me my friend we have a good topic today and uh, that I want to share with you. Today I'm sitting in front of the big boys. I'm, I'm back. I'm, I'm sharing with you my, my roots. And, of course, behind me, you can see my little live, live bear set up 
and there's a, a beta set up over there and but you know this is this is really uh you know it really is a love of mine these these big guys and That trout is just nuts. And I don't mean crazy nuts. He does he does get crazy sometimes, but if you were here and I wish you were here and you could see the the coloration on his body. I mean, a couple of videos ago I talked about how he just completely overwhelmed the uh, the the Apple phone. It just couldn't handle it. You know, I had to re re release a video using my sony a6400 because the the uh the apple just couldn't couldn't take it <laughs> all right so you noticed i put a little message in that um in that opening so that when people come on to the video and watch the replay they don't complain about i had to wait 10 minutes before ben showed up so uh <laughs> So I put a little a little uh, message there for those folks. Hey, man, go to the 10-minute mark. So, Chandra in the house, good morning to you. And good theme in today's live. Thank you. Thank you for that. I actually need to grab something, which I need to include in today's, uh, in today's video. Some props. Uh, Ray says that they have definitely grown. They have grown. They have grown. And... Uh, I don't have the world's biggest hands, but they're good size. You can get a get a perspective here. What we're looking at here. My little beasts. All right. So I'm gonna grab something. Hold on one second, because I want to include something in today's talk. Enjoy the fish for just a second. All right, I got it. Nice to have a few props. A little show and tell. So let's, uh, let's do a real quick, real quick shout out here to some VIPs. My Patreon. Let's move it over here. Oop, not the camera. So these are the uh, members of what is called the Garage Gang, or my Patreon monthly supporters. I'll move the scrolling list over here. And just a, a, a big shout-out to all of them, because they, they really... Uh, make a difference in what I can do here in the fish room. And so just a big shout out. And the the details for being a Patreon monthly supporter, which starts for as little as three dollars a month, is underneath the video. And it makes you an honorary member of the garage gang. Yes, we are in a garage right now, a very warm garage. I have a fan blowing cool air from the house. But when it's ninety Five outside and uh, you know eighty percent humidity. So um, shout out to my patrons. Also a big shout out to my wonderful moderators who really help to keep the stream going. All, shout out to those of you who have subscribed and show up here on Saturdays, and uh, and also a, uh, a shout out to those of you who super chat like Vibes Aquatics just did. He just hit me with a super chat, and he is asserting I don't use chemical filtration. All right. We're going to talk about that. We are going to talk about that. Uh, let's give away some more towels. We have some of these wonderful uh, aquarium co-op towels. 
I have a, a several of them I can give away. We'll throw in a holographic, a holographic cichlids and coffee sticker for those of you who don't have that. And that's not all. <laughs> we'll also throw in some uh, some packets of very high quality Sarah food. Sarah food, and this is for anyone who uh, super chats. 15 or more and that helps cover the uh shipping so there you go so um we have a question from now i'm saying <laughs> not even gonna try and pronounce it and uh, well the truth is that these plants as good as they look are actually artificial they are um they are from a company that unfortunately is no longer around because of a personal tragedy they had, but they are from a company called Elite Cichlids, used to be florists, and then became aquarium plant makers. And I was fortunate, fortunate enough to sort of affiliate and, and, and represent them a little bit while they were around, and they sent me some of these good-looking plants. So uh, uh, no, no problems. With plants nibbling, nibbling on the, uh, with uh, fish nibbling on the plants. That's not, not a problem. Looks like I got hit with another super chat there by Peas and Haps Forever. Thank you, my friend, for the coffee fund. I promise I will put it to good use. Another super chat. What's happening? What's happening today? So <clears throat> I thank you for that super chat and uh let's see here that was from warren venter guys and gals don't forget to like and subscribe thank you warren very nice of you my friend very very nice of you so <clears throat> let's take a look here at today's topic after we do the uh that official start. Here we go. You ready? Hold on. All right. So um, we are now officially underway. So if somebody goes to that 10 minute mark when they come on, they're going to be in good shape. So let me go ahead and hide this banner. I'll, I'll show it later for those who come on late. But fifteen dollar super chats will get you. Will get you some swag. All right. So there's been some real interesting uh, videos recently, and I, I get I pull my inspiration for content from a variety of sources. If I had to, if I had to rate them, I would say that number one is um, your comments. Your comments very often will spark something, and uh, and 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 send me in a direction thinking about something. Uh, another uh, another source of inspiration are um, other videos. Other videos out there, I'll look at a video and go, "Oh, that's a that's a kind of a cool topic," and I. And I've got something to say about that that wasn't actually expressed in that first video. So um, sometimes I'll go into the uh, the YouTube, what they call YouTube research, and and look for inspiration there. It, it's usually the same thing. Uh, people like electric blue acaras. People like to hear about canister filters. Uh, people like to hear about Pyrogen. So, I mean, these are the things that kind of rank in what people are searching for, which is kind of interesting. There's probably only so many, so many uh, videos you can release about about those topics. But uh, there's always kind of a new angle, and I hope to to hit on a few new angles about uh, today's topics. Hey, vibes! Thank you for that. Something for the French coffee. You know, we do. We do drink uh, a French uh, French roast, so you uh, you hit it on the head there, my friend. 
my wife and I are, I'll admit, we're a little bit of coffee, coffee snobs. So, <laughs> so thank you, Vibes, for that. Hey, Jer Jeremy Moore in the house. Just finished a water change on his 90-gallon Central American Cichlid Tank. Jeremy, tell us what you have in there. I want, I want your fish list, my friend. What do you have in there? What Central Americans do you have in that tank? Ah, you don't have to let, list them all if you got a ton of them. What's your, tell me about your centerpiece fish. Let me see. Did we say hi to Nathan already? Yes, we did, I think. And uh, we said hi to Mario. Okay, good. Lady T, did we say hi to you, Lady T? I sure hope so. All right. Let's carry on here. So, first of all, what kind of started me down this uh, rabbit hole was uh, researching a hole in the head, and then I came across something that I had, I had never heard of. And, and you tell me if you heard of this and, and, uh, and what you've heard about it. Because I'd be curious if this has been around and, it, and it's just been off my radar. But the topic of a carbon possibly removing some important things from the water. So for the people that use carbon continuously, right? And I'm talking about something like this, right? This is a matrix, probably the best, most absorbent carbon I've ever, I've ever come across. A little scooper in there. I just put it into a mesh bag and drop it in. But man, oh man, does it work. But what I came across was that the carbon might be removing from the water that if used over, might be removing from the water nutrients and minerals and, and capturing certain, certain things that are, you know, floating around in the water column that can predispose the fish to hole in the head. And of course, we're talking about folks that, that are using carbon on a long-term basis. I have a little carbon right now, believe it or not, in the 90-gallon, which I just treated for hole in the head, but that's only going to be in there for two weeks to remove the residual medication that's left over from the paracleanse because I just don't want it in there. So I'm just going to pull it out with the carbon and then toss the carbon in two weeks. So it'll be carbon free. So now carbon, I guess, has some mechanical properties. But I think it, it's something you would call most definitely a, a chemical type of filtration in what it does. Very, I guess, similar in some ways to the resins, the, the, the resin, the special high absorbent resins that are used with products like Seachem Pyrogen, uh, the Boyd Industries products, right? Some of the Boyd Industry products. Like blue, the blue and green products. And those resins don't seem to have, don't seem to have the same uh, scuttlebutt, the same ideas floating around out there that they might actually be removing good stuff from the water column that could predispose the fish to some type of disease. So, those seem a bit safer, a bit safer than long-term continuous use of carbon. Now, where does where does things like this? This is a carbon infused media pad. This is something I get from the aquarium co-op, and you just you just cut them, you just cut them, and you drop them, you drop them into your filter, and instead of putting matrix in a bag which can be a little messy you just drop this in leave it in for as much time as you want and then it will become exhausted after a while and you pull it out and throw it away 
So where, where does this fit into the scheme of chemical filtration? Do we, are we thinking of um, liquid when we're thinking chemicals, or are we also thinking things like infused pads? And, and what about um, a pneumonia pad? Now, you know these pads are infused with something that gets them to neutralize ammonia. And how about a, a, uh, a phosphate pad? These pads, all of which were kindly provided by Aquarium Co-op, all of them are infused with something that, that reacts with that particular item that they, they claim to actually either work on or general item like being carbon. Now, have you heard... Anything about carbon and hole in the head, right? The head and lateral line erosion, H-L-L-E, which I just call hell for short. Uh, have you heard anything about that connection? And, what do, and how do you think extended carbon use ties into that? And how do pads, would pads give you the same kind of result? Or were they just simply exhaust? Um, and one other point. And is this also true of resin products, right? Like your Chemi Blue, Chemi, Chemi Pure, uh, Green and Blue, or your Pure Gen. Do those products, like carbon, reach a certain point of absorption where they are exhausted? saturated and then start to leach or release in a concentrated form the things that they originally absorbed is that an issue have you heard about anything about that that these products when let's say you throw up a ccam pyrogen bag into your filter whether it's a sump, a hang on back, wherever, and you forget about it. And a year later, you're in there doing something. You go, oh, look, I forgot I put this in, and it's jet black. Does that, did that reach a point where it was actually leaching back in a concentrated fashion the, the things that it had absorbed, or does it actually become neutral or benign and, 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 and just doesn't have any impact on the aquarium? So a lot of you on the stream and a lot of you that are going to watch the replay, you know more about this than I do. You're more of an engineer. You're more of a, of a chemist. You're more of a biologist. So comment, you know, let me know if you've heard about these things and, and, and is it something we as fish keepers should be more alert to because we, we can then end up with one of those weird, weird things. You know, how many times do I get an email or a, a comment? My fish were doing great, and now I'm, I'm going through a die-off. My water is testing okay. I'm doing everything like I've, I'm doing my weekly water changes. My temperature's good. What's going on? And completely off their radar, they might not know that they are doing a slow arsenic-style poisoning of the fish and, without even knowing it because they've neglected a, 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 a piece of chemical filtration that's sitting inside of a filter, in some cases, completely forgotten about. Now, this... This makes a case, this makes a bit of a case for keeping a, uh, a fish log. Now, some of you out there, and if you do, share it in the comments. And if you are doing it, are you doing it as an app? Are you keeping it manually? Are you, in, are you using the notes in your phone? Do you have a whiteboard like I do here in my fish room? 
where you actually can write in added phosphate pad on this date. Added activated carbon on this date. And when you look at that whiteboard or you look in your nodes, you go, oh, that carbon's been in there for a month. I'm pulling it out. As opposed to sort of dropping it in. Now, even, even more, to take it even to a higher notch of professionalism, <laughs> I got something cold to drink too. Because it is warm in here. Homemade pink lemonade. If you like the recipe, just email me at ben.o.cichlid at gmail.com. So, if you want to take it to a, an, another level, when you put that carbon in, you create a reminder on your Google calendar, pull carbon. One month from today, right? You pull carbon on the, on the 26th of September. So you get a reminder, right? Now you're, now you're, now you're really snap and pop, man. Now you're on it. The chance of neglecting something is going to be very, very small. So now let me let me switch gears just a little bit here. Let's talk a little bit about this. I added this. I added this to my 90 gallon. And I mentioned earlier I was going to talk about hole in the head. And I'm telling you, it's looking better. There's still one little stubborn pit on the forehead of one of the geos, but the rest of them I'm seeing a faded version of the hole in the head. In other words, it's it's starting to, to sort of melt back or, or, or fade and become more of a normal blended in color. What did I do? Well, at first, huge water changes. That didn't give me an immediate result. Maybe I didn't give it enough time. But after that, I put them through a, um, a paracleanse, one round of paracleanse, making sure that there's, you know, following the directions exactly, right? No water changes during treatment, no, no carbon or chemical filtration in any of the filters. You, know, you really follow the directions, and then you do the water change, you know, when, when it says to do the water change. So I put them through that, and that, that seemed to, to some degree, not, not let it get worse, but I can say that I saw some healing. But I did see it sort of arrest, right? And it is very slow moving. And, and what you're hearing here is subjective and anecdotal. And you know what? Sometimes, honestly, we see what we want to see. And so to me, it looked different. Maybe someone else would come in and go, eh, it looks about the same. It looked a little better to me. Then, I finished the paracleanse and I added this green healing machine, GKM. And when you do, when you use UV, you're, you're, you're killing water, you know, waterborne in the water column pathogens, but you're not going to kill them. You're not going to kill them with very low wattage. You're going you're gonna to get water clarity. You're going to get water clarity, but you're not going to get um, the, really the killing off of viruses, you know, pathogen, things, things that could harm the fish are not going to get killed by a 9-watt UV light inside of a Sun Sun canister, right, with water flying by at 300 gallons per hour. That's not going to happen. You're going to get some water clarity. You're going to you're going to clean up some of the bacterial bloom. Um, you know, some of the algae bloom is going to get cleared up a little a little bit. Uh, maybe 
Oh, well, that's about it. But when I saw this product, and I saw that it's giving me the 20, I think that this is the 24 watts. I got the higher wattage. And it comes with its own water pump. I'm not sponsored by these guys, by the way. But I will include a link to my Amazon store that you can actually, if you, if you follow that link, maybe I'll get 10 cents for everyone you buy. But um, so it gives me, uh, it gives me a 20, 24, I think it's 24 watts and a slow water flow. And so I think it accomplishes what you want. So the fish in that 90 gallon now are in between water changes and the UV are in very, very good water. Then I added salt. And what I what I use is the Fritz, the Fritz, uh, I think it's A plus, the Fritz A plus product. One tablespoon for every five gallons. So on a ninety gallon aquarium, there's gonna be that's a lot of salt. And um, keep in mind that salt will not evaporate. So if you top off your aquarium, you don't need to add more salt. However, if you do a water change, a 50% water change, you do have to replenish 50% of your salt. Okay, just something to keep in mind. Uh, something all of you saltwater tank keepers know that your salt will not evaporate, but um, it will need to be replenished in a water change. So I'm going to put out. I'm going to put out a video that will show you some close-ups of the geos and you'll see you'll see the uh the hole in the head you'll see one pit and then a lot of very faded they look like they're disappearing pits and i'll, I'll talk some more about the steps i took in, in that video thank you vibes another another super chat Now, vibes. If you're close to fifteen dollars, if you're uh, if you're close to that uh, fifteen dollar threshold, uh, be sure to send me your uh, send me. A, I know you've done it before, and I probably got it somewhere in there, but it, it works as a reminder. Send me your address, and let me know if you want that uh, that aquarium co-op towel. I think you already have a holographic panel sticker, but if you don't, let me know. I'll get you the uh, I'll get you the sticker, the the Sarah food, very very good quality food out of Germany, and the aquarium co-op, the best towel, best towel there is. I usually always have one on my shoulder when I'm doing water changes. If you're getting close to fifteen, there, buddy, be sure to send me an email. I know it's for the coffee fund, but I like to uh, thank people for super chatting. All right, so let's take a look. Let's take a look at your comments because um, I know all of you have different opinions about chemical filtration. Some of you use it, some of you don't. Uh, me personally, I, I will throw in a little pyrogen if a brand new tank is not cycling uh, or is not clearing up fast enough or is giving me a, a bit of a cloudy result. I might throw a little pyrogen in, uh, but then I stop using it. I pull it out after maybe th maybe two months, three months. I'll pull it out and usually don't recharge it. I'm not saying don't recharge it. Recharging it is a great idea. Saves you a lot of money, but I don't usually recharge it. And, um, and then that's the end of chemical filtration. Now, because very often I'm setting up an aquarium with, uh, with things like Fritzyme, Fritzyme 7, Fritzyme 700, you know, these are like quick start products, as well as media that I've pulled from sumps or from hang on back filters. 
So I'll pull some of that media, drop it into the new aquarium's filters, and uh, or sometimes use some of the substrate from an established fil from an established aquarium. But because of that, I, I, I honestly I can't remember the last time I got a new aquarium algae or bacterial bloom that clouded the tank. I can't remember the last time that happened. Actually, I take it back. When I first set up the 90 gallon, I did too much too soon in a maintenance cycle. I did too much too soon, and I started, uh, sort of restarted the cycle, and I lost some very good fish. And that gave me uh, a cloudy water situation, a bit of an algae bloom, a bacterial bloom. But usually that doesn't happen because I'm starting my aquariums with uh, media from established tanks and very often uh, substrate from established tanks and so the aquarium will go right into a full you know behaving like a fully cycled aquarium assuming you put the fish in right away now this is a mistake that people do will do sometimes but two mistakes well three mistakes three mistakes people do when they use quick start products one, they, they use the product without checking the bottle for an expiration date. If the bottle doesn't have an expiration date, that's not right. If it does, don't use it if it's past the expiration date. Don't use it if it says refrigerate and you haven't had it refrigerated. Throw it out because that bacteria is dead. Some of them, like the Fritzyme 7, doesn't require refrigeration there's a there's there's a science behind why you have those two different products uh you can write to a uh, fritz they will answer your question about why that is uh don't use quick start products past expiration dates number two condition the water with your fritz complete or your Seachem prime or whatever it is that you're using condition the water before adding beneficial bacteria or before adding media from an established tank. If you fill the tank up with tap water and then add Fritzyme or add the, the media from an established tank, you will kill off the, the beneficial bacteria and you will end up with an ammonia spike that kills your fish. All right? So just some very, very important points when using those products watch for expiration dates condition the water before using use those products exactly as they say on the label and then the point that's missed immediately immediately add fish not 50 fish four fish six fish Immediately add fish. Why? You know why. Because your beneficial bacteria needs a food source. And if you don't add fish right away, and I've had people write to me and say, Ben, I, I follow all the steps on Fritzyme. The aquarium's been up for a month. Should I add fish? Ah! You've probably starved out your beneficial bacteria. It probably cannibalized itself and, uh, and then died off. So no, you can't add fish. Start over again. And you're probably, you probably don't need your, your chlorine ammonia conditioners, but you, you will need more beneficial bacteria. And then add your fish right away so you provide a food source. If you're waiting for your fish to arrive because you ordered some fish, you know, throw a little food in there. You know, some of the old timers would throw a, a, a shrimp. You know, they throw a shrimp in there. You know, there's some things you can do. But get something decaying. Get something to start decaying and producing ammonia, which that beneficial bacteria can munch on. Turn into nitrite, 
which will then convert to nitrate. All right, so those are the mistakes that people will do. And uh, hey, another super chat. Finn Goldfin just order what five what twenty five six inch Malawi what you ordered some six inch Malawi gars. Man, those are going to be awesome, my friend. Now, you ordered a five. A five and a quarter? A five? Is that? Did, okay, I just ordered a five. I guess that might be five and a half or five. I'm not sure what that means, but I, I'm. Oh, five and a half. Five point two five point two six inch Malawi gar. Been on my fish bucket list for a long time. Man, I tell you, Malawi Gars. And that, now, that should be already colored up in the lip, the, the lower lip in particular, the cheeks. You should have some red in the anal fin and some egg spots. And uh, after he settles in, it's, you're going to have an awesome fish. Now, if you put a few rocks, I don't have it that much here, but. If you put a few rocks together, maybe about a half inch apart, your Malawi gar will get on his side, will go on his side and go in there, push in there to get food. And that's how they hunt in the wild. They go after fry that are hiding, that are hiding between rocks, and they're specially adapted with that, with that mouth. Come on over here, buddy. Right on cue. There he is. I call him my jazz trumpet player. He's got those developed lips and like a like a trumpet player. Beautiful color, an alternating braid braid work of blue, a red, an orange red, and black markings. Red in the anal fin with white egg spots. Beautiful uh, luminescent blue in the lips. And if he gets fired up, it's also in the cheeks, a white stripe on the dorsal fin with a little bit of orange on the top. Just a crazy, crazy looking fish. One of my favorites. So, very well done, and congratulations on that. So, Let's take a look at some of your your questions and see what you got for me. I can now give hearts to uh, I can now hit your your super chat with a heart, which I couldn't do before. YouTube is trying to make everything more interactive, so I'm going back and giving all you super chatters a big uh, a big red heart on your super chats. Somebody asked about recharging um, recharging pyrogen, and the process is real simple if you want to recharge pyrogen. You can recharge it uh, up to about eight times. Now, what that does, I mean, of course, it depends on your, on, on your bio load, right? But, and usually, you know, you want one bag for every 100 gallons, so I would use three bags in this tank. But if I put, let's say, another five or six fish, I might use four or five bags, right, if I was using it. But when it gets brown, when it gets a tan color, you don't want to wait until it gets black. When it gets into a, a, maybe a brown, dark brown, dark tan, you just put it in a 50% in a bleach and water. You just let it sit for 24 hours in 50% bleach and water. The bleach will gas off, so it'll become, it'll become neutral. It'll become inert. So you have to worry about bleach contamination, but the bleach over a 24-hour period. After 24 hours, you'll see that your pyrogen has become white again. Then what you do is you give it a good rinse. Just rinse it out really, really good in running water, and then let it sit in water with 
you know, a tablespoon or two of water conditioner. Let it sit for another 24 hours like that. And then after 24 hours, give it a good rinse. It shouldn't smell at all like bleach. It should be very neutral, smell like water. And you're good to go. You can drop it right back in the filter, drop it in the sump, and it's completely safe. Nothing will happen. You can go to the Seachem Purigen webpage and just search. And I suggest you do that because I'm just some dude talking on YouTube. Go to the Seachem webpage and type in recharging Purigen. It'll, it'll give you in writing the detailed steps to follow. And, you know, you can do it. When you, when you figure the recharging, it really is a much better uh, product cost-wise compared to your, your uh, Chemi Pure, Chemi Pure Blues and Greens, which you throw out after six months. You just toss them and, and put a new one in. So uh, now, if you listen to folks like Ponguru, he's going to tell you, not to use those products, and I believe because he feels it will pull from the water column things that are vital in the uh, production of beneficial bacteria on the media, in his case, biohome. So he says when you're using biohome and trying to get a full cycle, and by full cycle, an aquarium that will convert nitrate back into a, a form that will gas off, right? So you end up with a zero nitrate aquarium without, without water changes. Now, a lot of folks are going to argue that that's impossible. There are people on YouTube that say they've done it. Uh, but at any rate, I don't want to argue about that right now. But he says, don't use things like Chemipure or Seachem Purigen because it will remove some of the ingredients in the water, some of the things in the water column that are vital for your beneficial bacteria, especially the development of the anaerobic beneficial bacteria that will take residency deep inside the biohome or the matrix or whatever you're using inside deep inside there where the water flow is almost non-existent is a low oxygen zone and that zone should be able to produce anaerobic bacteria now if you guys want to get into discussion on it go ahead i'm going to I'm going to plead the fifth. I'm not going to get into it. <laughs> if you contact Great Wave Engineering, Great Wave Engineering here in the United States, or Pond Guru over across the pond in the UK, uh, they'll tell you the formula. For a well-stocked African cyclic tank, Admittedly, they ask you to use a very large amount of biohome. Hundreds of dollars worth. Okay? So there is that. So you gotta take into account what your what your bio load is, how much their you know, your water turnover, the size of the aquarium, the several several moving parts. Like with anything we do, that has to be taken into consideration if you're going to be seeking a full, a full nitrogen cycle aquarium, which some people say is just impossible. All right. Let's take a look at some of your comments. And if I missed a super chat, I'm sorry. Um, I didn't ignore you. I've just been yapping. If you have super chatted over $15, please send me your uh, full name and mailing address, and let me know if you would like the towel, the food, and the sticker, and uh, I, will, I will get those 
mailed out to you sometime this coming week. And by the way, this t-shirt is from a talk. This is from a talk I gave in uh, Knoxville. And a week from today, a week from today, I'm going to be speaking at the uh, at the Music City Aquarium Group, Music City Aquarium Society. They have a Facebook page that you can get. And um, let me see if I can find it here. But if you're in Tennessee, if you're in Middle Tennessee, visit Music City Aquarium Society. And this coming Saturday, a week from today, at 2 p.m., I'm going to be uh, I'm going to be giving a talk there. And I've got a few ideas. The talk might be similar to what I did at the East Tennessee with this group, but um, I might be doing something different. I'll be putting together some PowerPoint slides. But come on by, come on by and say hi. And uh, yeah, here it is, Tanner Kesterson. Our September meeting is coming. Ben Ochart, local YouTuber, will be speaking on. Improving personal enjoyment and the health of our fish. Fish health is critical part of the fish health is a critical part of the hobby. Hope to see everyone there. Okay, so, so Saturday, September second at two p.m. Central Time, and that is their September meeting. And I hope to see you there if you are in middle in Middle Tennessee. You folks know the uh, Tennessee flag has three stars. And they are for each part of Tennessee, right? We have Eastern Tennessee, Middle Tennessee, and uh, the Western part of the state. Each of those have their own star on the, on the flag. And I am loving living here. So, there you go. Let's get, a, get rid of the giveaway icon. And let's take a look at some of your comments and questions. Uh, yes, uh, Denny, there still will be a live stream, and as soon as that live stream is over, I will be packing up and heading downtown to downtown Nashville. I'm about 20, 30 minutes out from downtown Nashville, and uh, and I'll be showing up down there. So yeah, but there still will be a live stream on Saturday the 2nd. So I am uh, scrolling the chat. Cichlid kings, yes, they, they do look huge, don't they? Except for my little runt, my little uh, bicolor 500, who somehow stays off the radar. I mean, look at his tail, his dorsal, his pack. I mean, he's he's completely in perfect shape so he's obviously off the radar you know sometimes a fish will get to a point where they're in that neutral zone where you're too big to fit in my mouth and your colors are not similar enough to threaten me and you're too small to be a threat anyway if there was a female in here you wouldn't be a threat so they just leave the fish alone and that's about as big as he's going to get So, Nathan says the big boys are looking great. Thank you, Nathan. You know, uh, Manuel uh, Noriega says those big boys are beautiful. Look at all the colors. There used to be a, a, a kind of a theory, theory about needing to have some females in the tank so you could get what is called uh, breeding, breeding dress. And I haven't found that to be the case. If you just have 
if you had real good good water good water quality um good water turnover good filtration you know good lighting you're, you're going to get good color you don't you don't necessarily have to risk having females in here that they're going to fight over and uh and go into not just breeding dress, but breeding behavior, which is when they really lose their minds. So, um, so you don't need, I mean, look at this, look at this sand diver. It's like someone attached tin foil, colored foil to the top of his body. Anyway, certainly I digress. So let's see here. I'm taking a look for at your comments. By the way, there's another product that I started adding to the 90-gallon that you might find very interesting. Hold on one second. One of you suggested this, and um, it's, it's not cheap. You know, and it's and it's made by the same folks that make uh, Kimmy Kimmy Pure, Boyd Enterprises. So they're they're legit, and it's called Vitachem. And one of you suggested it. You put one teaspoon in one teaspoon in, or fifty drops for uh, well, one drop per gallon, right? And one teaspoon is fifty drops. I put basically two teaspoons into the 90. You can see it here. You can make that out with the, with the bright colors. Well, maybe I'll put some links under the video on this, but it's called Vitachem, and it's, it's adding a bunch of vitamins and minerals that I can't read without my glasses on. But uh, I do have a hack for that. If you have a phone and you don't have your reading glasses, go into your photographic mode and use the enlargement function. <laughs> so what do we got? We've got, there's a little teeny bit of protein and fat and fiber in here, but otherwise it's vitamin A. B, E, C, combination of B vitamins, a little bit of fish oil, vitamin A supplement, and uh, some amino acids. Several, uh, I don't know, it looks like a dozen amino acids. So, uh, Vitachem Fresh, you keep it in the fridge, and... Uh, you know, I can't tell you for sure. Was it the UV light? Was it the water changes? Was it the paracleanse? Was it the Vitacam? Was it the, you know, I, I hit it from a lot of different angles, that hole in the head. So what was it that, that got them to start showing signs of recovery? I, I, can't, I can't say, I, I, I can't in all honesty say this was it. And if somebody was hit with hole in the head, if they saw a hole in the head, I would say, man, do it all. Got nothing to lose. Do some big water changes. Hit it with paracleanse. Pull all your carbon chemical filtration out. Hit it with some Vitacam when you're done with your paracleanse. You know, you got, uh, throw a UV light. You know, throw a green killing machine on there, right? You got, you got nothing to lose. Otherwise. Well, you do have something to lose. If it doesn't stop or slow down or go away, you're going to end up with a dead fish. So you do have something to lose. So hit it, hit it with both barrels. All right, let's see. Jeremy Moore finished his water change. Congratulations! Now you get the fun, they, uh, now you have the fun of enjoying and watching that beautiful tank.
Yeah, it looks like like some of, like a, a good number of you were aware of the the question about carbon and its impact on removing good things and leaching back. So it looks like like a lot of you were aware of it, and it does look also like a lot of you don't use chemical filtration, like me. Once an aquarium has become established, and uh, Warren Venter, I mean, yeah, we're we're on the same page, Warren. I mean, Warren is. Uh, you know, he'll throw some in to remove some of the uh, meds after a treatment. So, yeah, we're on the same page on that. Jeremy Moore, you're giving me that fish list. Thank you, Jeremy. He's got a female red devil. I'm jealous. I went to predatory fins and they were out of stock. Uh, maybe I'm crazy, but I'm thinking of throwing a female in there with that with that red devil. I, red devil I got from Whip. So uh, maybe I'm nuts, but uh, let's see. Female, you got a female red devil. You got a green tear, a chocolate, green severum, golden severum, or catfish, nine Buenos Aires tetras as ditherfish. Now that might that's probably a beautiful tank. Now if you want to send me a picture, Jeremy, send me a picture of that tank. I'd love to see those fish living together. Especially if that female has colored up. Send it to Ben dot O dot cichlid at gmail dot com and maybe I'll uh show it. Show it during a live stream. Peas and haps forever. I will sometimes use the phosphate pads if I have to battle an algae breakout. Now, is that in an unplanted tank? Because when I showed some of my videos about, about trying to control black algae originally with the phosphate pads, some folks pointed out a bit of a contradiction because the plants that were trying to become established, they need the phosphate and were competing with the black algae. One of my conclusions on why the black algae uh, retreated was that the other plants were able to outcompete with the black algae. They were able to, to absorb the phosphates, so the black algae couldn't. And, and so the black algae without nutrients then would, would uh, disappear. But uh, is that a planted tank? Or an unplanted tank, peas and haps forever. Pray tell. Nathan, I have not heard that the carbon pads can cause hole in the head. I, in particular, I have just heard that carbon, extended prolonged use of carbon has somehow been connected to HLLE in Oscars in long-term use, long use. So the research is out there. If you just Google using carbon and HLLE, you'll get several articles that have appeared in, you know, on aquatic vlogs and blogs and magazines and what have you. Well, thank you for that. Yes, the Venusis is, uh, and I'm replying to Nawamsaini. The Venusis really is pretty, and he is a very mellow fish. Where is he? Come here, boys. He's the most mellow Venusis I've ever had. He acts like a, like a Placidochromis. He acts like a deep water hap. But nobody messes with him. I mean, maybe a little bit. But he's got a lot of yellow. Sometimes he'll show his giraffe pattern. Sometimes. He's got a beautiful blue, a different kind of light, light. And then it goes dark to purple, almost like you'd see on a, uh, 
on certain peacocks. So he's a uh, definitely a cool fish. Clarence Carr in the house didn't know you didn't notice didn't notice you earlier, Clarence, and didn't say hello. But hello to you if you're still here. Has gone from Africans to South Americans, and uh, you know, there's a. I don't know if 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 I can say at this stage, which admittedly is early in my South American Central American cyclic career. But I can't say which one is more peaceful. I have seen the, the um, South and Centrals really go at it. What I haven't seen with the Central Americans that I have seen with, with the, uh, the Malawis, especially, interestingly enough, the peacocks, not so much the predators, but the peacocks, is that relentless singling out of one fish and then continuing to hit that fish until the fish is dead and not eating or doing anything, you know, not trying to, you know, consume the fish, just killing it for the sake of killing it. I haven't seen that with the Central Americans now, I, or the South Americans, and uh, I hope I never do. Maybe if I had left that red devil in there, maybe at some point, maybe that would have happened, or the red terror, rather. Uh, and maybe that's what I was thinking when I commented on that other aquarium. I was thinking about a red terror female, which is a beautiful fish with black and red alternating stripes on the body. But at any rate, yeah, I can't say definitively, definitively, if uh, if which one is the more uh, the more aggressive. Okay, so Jeremy Moore, this is good. Jeremy Moore says he's researched it and that, that carbon will eventually release back the chemicals it's taken out if left in for longer than needed. Now, what's longer than needed? I guess we got water turnover, bio load. You know, we, we have different factors, right? In some cases, that might be a month, three months. Six months, I guess it's different. I don't like leaving it in for more than a month. Pyrogen holds it and keeps it until full, and then it doesn't remove anything, but it doesn't leach back into the aquarium. That's a, that's a very important distinction between those two products. Thank you for that. Uh, thank you for that, Jeremy Moore. I will pin the comment for those of you who want to see it. Regarding uh, keeping track of what you're doing in the fish room, Cichlid uh, King says that my memory is pretty good. Still keep a digital notebook of tank changes. That's smart, you know? Google Calendar for the filter maintenance. Very, very smart. I mean, yeah, we can rely on memory, but I'll tell you, we get distracted. You know, you get distracted and uh, you forget. Jeremy Moore, UV light is awesome. I use that for the same one. Yeah, I agree. I think, it, it, I think this, this green killing machine has the perfect combination of um, water flow and wattage. If you get the bigger unit, it's more expensive. It's going to run around 80 bucks, 80, 90 bucks. But you get the, the bigger unit, the higher wattage unit, which I think I said 24 watts. Yeah. 24 watts, and uh, they've sold over three-quarters of a million. And you don't have to uh, splice it in line. Like there are certain like uh, UV, like a twist, things like that, that you actually have to splice it into, into a hose, right? And then reclamp and then start up the filter and, I don't like that for a couple of reasons. Uh, if you do it into your regular filter system, your water flow is going to be too fast. So you have to go get another pump, a slow-moving pump, and uh, and somehow 
you know, use that, uh, splice it in either through a sump or some, some way. And, um, and it, it creates two, by splicing it into a hose, you create two new potential leak points in your system. So I tend to shy away from potential leak points. And whenever you splice into a hose, whether it's a heater or a UV, you create potential leak points. So, All right, I am cruising the comments. Yeah, you know, Cichlid Kings, if, if you're, if you're, um, there is, there is some wiggle room, you know, we, if you miss your, if you miss a week of water change, uh, because you're on vacation and then you come back and you do it as soon as you, you can get to it, you're probably not going to experience something, you know, cataclysmic, right? You're going to, you're going to have a problem if you wait for three months and, you know, your water level is way down, and so the, the, the concentration is higher of the nitrates. And I mean, it's just, it's just nasty. It gets nasty. It starts to smell a little funny. Uh, you're going to have a problem. You're going to have a tank that is, that is headed towards pollution, right? So, uh, yeah, I mean, you miss a few days. So uh, don't turn off the reminders uh, if, you, if you're not in town. Just maybe move them out a week so they remind you again. Denny Riddell, the UV you have is a good one. And Denny knows. He, I know for a fact he's used twists. He's used the more expensive ones. And uh, so he knows about UV. Now, one of the reasons I like the fact that I've added UV to the 90-gallon is I would like to add some discus to that tank at some point. And uh, we'll see. I've got a couple feelers out. We'll see. M and C Aquatics. You know, I agree with you. I agree with you. MNC Aquatics. Sad thing is that there's almost as many bells and whistles for fresh water as there is salt water. Everyone seems uh, to way overcomplicate things. What's next? An algae reactor or flux capacitator that uses dilithium crystals. The dilithium crystal was added by me, but the uh, you're right, you're right. And I think if we if we move in the direction of effective filtration that is simple. Run your water through some type of filtering. Well, like my, my sumps. My sumps are just big, fat sponges, essentially. Water dumps in, goes through the big, fat sponges, gets pumped back up to the tank. Very simple. There's no, uh, you know, flux, uh, you know, black hole uh energy capacity <laughs> there's nothing it just water dumps into the sump travels through the fill through the sponges gets pumped back up and they're doing a great job the thick matten sponges from swiss tropicals are providing a wonderful home for beneficial bacteria and it requires next to zero maintenance so uh there you go you do have to top it off but yeah i think simple Simple is always better, less to go wrong, and uh, and you're right. Some of that salt water stuff gets gets brought over, and it can get real complicated real fast. Now, uh, M and C Aquatics in my 34 tanks running now. I can't say I've ever used chemical filtration. Now. Are you uh, are you using water conditioning, which is a type of chemical additive 
not considered filtration per se, but are you like on a well where you don't need that? Uh, are you are you using chemical uh, water conditioning? Just curious. And are you breeding? Why thirty four tanks? Are you are you breeding and selling, or are you just you just have the uh, multiple tank syndrome? MTS that so many of us suffer from, uh, for which there is no cure. MNC Aquatics, over 150. Wow. All air powered. Wow. Very cool. Dennis is using uh, C. Campirogen and Bosgard and Fritz Zyme 7 and Fritz Complete. Nasayami you is a father fish. Oh, you're saying that I'm the father fish. You're saying that I'm the father fish for uh cyclic. That's a big compliment because I admire and respect father fish. And I appreciate that. Maybe we'll do a collaboration someday. Two worlds. Two worlds coming together. Jeremy, yeah, Jeremy, I think I was thinking a uh, red tear, and you have a red devil, but still, that's a beautiful combination. I still want a picture of your aquarium. Any other questions, hit me with them now before we wrap up, and if I missed a super chat, I am sorry. I did not ignore you. And, uh, yeah, I don't know where Whip is. I saw him at um, the Friday, which was a surprise, because normally it's Thursday. I saw him at the Friday KG Tropicals live stream. I think I saw Whip in there, but I did not see him here today. Whip, hope you're okay, buddy, if you watch the replay. M&C Aquatics, no, no water conditioner. Okay, are you on a well? Are you on a well? Or is it... Uh, or are you running the dirted, the dirted, heavily planted shrimp and you know smaller stocked aquariums? In which case, you you know like like LRB, where you really wouldn't don't need that. I mean don't I mean that's a interesting situation. Uh, salient or um, cichlid uh, kings or somebody, Danny. If MNC Aquatics has a YouTube channel or MNC, you can do it. Can you go ahead and just share the link? Share the link in the chat and we can take a look at it at some point in the future. All right. Well water. Okay. Now, MNC. Something I heard the other day, and you probably know more about this than I do. But somebody who was on Wellwater posted under one of my videos that local farm runoff had contaminated the well and he killed off a lot of his fish. So I would advise that even though it's been, it's been great up until now, and maybe you're doing this already, maybe I'm preaching to the choir, but even Wellwater, you should run an occasional water test do you do that are you running water tests from time to time once a quarter once a year are you doing tests on your water on your well water just curious on that because i have heard that it can get dangerous runoff from time to time rare but it does happen CC Custom Leatherworks in the house. Thank you for uh, stopping by, my friend. And uh, Sand, in my opinion, is going to give you is going to give you a very. This was sold to Sand, but is a, a bit too coarse. 
to be called real sand. You can still get detritus into it and anchored in it. Real sand, like I have in my planted tank, um, like I have in the 90-gallon, that to me is, is, is the easiest because waste will settle on the top, and if you have any kind of water circulation or geos that, or fish that, that sift, it's going to get moved up into the water column and taken in by the filters, or you can use a wave maker. So it's very easy. You, you, never need to, you really never need to vacuum when you have a, a, a sand. I wouldn't go with a super fine. Because a superfine will can get kicked up and get sucked into your filters and damage your 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 motors, your pumps. But you know, maybe point one, point one five, point two. If I'm if I'm thinking correctly about the the grain size, maybe point yeah, yeah one millimeter, one point five, somewhere in there, maybe two. Not too fine. The the sand in the 90-gallon is just about as big as you want to get it. But, uh, all right, MNC will test that well water every month, and I think that is very wise, very, very wise. And Salient did share the MNC channel link. There you go. It sounds like you have a channel like LRB. Very, very nice guy. We did do a collaboration once. Paul Newman is using stress coat, even though he's on well water. Very, very cool. All right. So there you have it. We are, we've run over a little bit. And uh, I've used up a little bit extra of your, uh, of your weekend. I appreciate it. Let's call the guys over to say bye. All right. Say bye to all the wonderful people out there in YouTube land. And it's hard to beat a big fish, right? The way they interact. The way they look you right in the eye and they stare you down. You know who stares me down all the time is my betta. I go up to that betta tank and he like, you want a piece of me? Puts out those gills, right? You want a piece of me? Come on, bring it, bring it. Throws a few gang signs at me. All right, everybody. So uh, thank you so much for sitting in today. You are very appreciated. If you like today's live stream, be sure to uh, give it a thumbs up, hit that, uh, you know, hit that like button, subscribe, and be sure to share it. If you belong to some groups out there, share the live stream, get the word out. And uh, big shout out to my wonderful Patreon supporters my, and my wonderful, my wonderful uh, moderators and all of you who are subscribers. You are very, very appreciated. And I will see all of you this coming Saturday here at the same time and saturday afternoon at the music city aquatic society where i will be delivering a live talk i'll try and get it filmed and then share it with all of you and if well too soon and if you uh if you shared uh if you did do a super chat for 15 dollars or more be sure to send me your full name and mailing address and i will get out let me know if you want the towel, the food, the sticker. Let me know what you want. Some of you are writing to me and saying, I'll skip it, just use it for the channel. That's okay, too. You're very appreciated. Thank you so much, everybody. You're the best. And with that, let's go ahead and, and end off. You rock, my friends. See you next week.